Joining us now to discuss some of the latest moves from New York Mayor Eric Adams is Ross Barkin. He is a writer for New York Magazine and also a contributor to The Nation and great friend of the show. Great to see you, Ross. Good to see you, man. Thank you for having me. Great to be back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our pleasure. Um, so this uh, latest move from Eric Adams, let's go ahead and put this up on the screen, is he's instructed police to remove more mentally ill homeless people who appear visibly unwell and potentially unable to care for themselves. Um, this is sort of a, a difference from the previous guidance. My understanding is that it would be more about if they're a danger to themselves or others. This would be more about they're unable to care for themselves. So first, just explain the shift in policy and how it is expected to be implemented. So the, the main shift is you're talking about going after people who are also a danger to themselves or deemed a danger to themselves. And that's one big difference between the policy as, as it's been in the past, which is you can forcibly remove people who are deemed a danger to others. Mm. So police will be involved. There will be emergency uh, response teams as well. So it, it, it's a policy that's driven by a real need, which you have a large number of mentally ill people on the streets who need help. You also do have these random incidents of, of crime and violence that people are concerned about. And also you have this reality that the police may not always be the best people to handle those in distress. So it, it's a very complicated issue with no easy answers. And this is kind of Eric Adams's way to sort of deal with the very real problem of mentally ill people not getting treatment, roaming the streets of New York City. Mm. So what has been the reaction in New York, uh, broader populace, interest groups, and all of that? And what do you make of it? The reaction certainly from interest groups on the left has been very critical. There's a lot of fear that police will have the sweeping mandate to take people off the streets um, you know, th maybe throw them into a, a psych bed or into a hospital, and then either they can they can be out in a few days, or the ERs will be overwhelmed. Um, you know, some people have been somewhat receptive to the idea because there are a lot of homeless people on the street who do need mental health assistance. So it's definitely very controversial. I think Adams has struck another nerve. Um, but I, th I think there might be some understanding that, you know, something has to be done. And maybe this is one of those somethings. Uh, hmm. We're going to see. It, it, it's going to be very fascinating how this all unfolds. You know, it is complex because uh, I was reading that Times article that we led with where the headline is on city streets, fear and hope as mayor pushes to remove mentally ill. And they start with um, they're interviewing a woman who uh, herself suffers from, I believe it's bipolar disorder. And she is now she has been treated. She's on medication. She says she is now mentally stable. And she actually credits that to the fact that police previously had gotten her to a psych ward, and yet she also is very wary of this uh, new policy because she is fearful of the police and she's worried that as a black woman that she would be targeted. And that seems to me to be the core concern. I mean, it, it almost seems a, a very difficult burden to place on police to make these sorts of decisions uh, on the spot of whether someone is a risk to themselves, whether they're able to care for themselves. These are not mental health professionals. Are they trained to be able to uh, deal with the homeless population, be able to make those assessments in real time? They're going to be getting additional training. How good that training will be, to what degree will it be, these are all open questions. So yes, police officers don't necessarily sign up to be mental health professionals. They're in a very tough spot, right? I mean, you are trained to deal with certain threats. You have a gun. Um, mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of them are very young um, and, and they aren't necessarily the best people to do this kind of work. At the same time, you do have some mentally ill people who are violent. So can social workers alone do the task? I mean, that's where pairing them together is probably the best thing to do. But yes, I mean, some people need mental health treatment and lives can be saved with timely intervention. That's inarguable. The, the question will be, can this go awry, right? Can someone suffering from a schizophrenic episode be threatening a cop, the cop pulls the gun and they're dead. And uh -huh. that happened with a, a elderly woman in 2016. She was killed by 
police while brandishing a baseball bat in her apartment and she suffered from schizophrenia and and normally was not violent but she was having an episode so it's very very challenging um but i do think people on the left are a bit too dismissive of the policy because there absolutely are people who need these kinds of interventions who need to be put into treatment and be prescribed medication and be under supervision i'm glad you said that you know for me a crazy experience was actually seeing Skid Row. And I, when I saw that, I, I was like, I cannot believe that this, is, this exists in the United States. Now, I understand that a vast majority of those people are drug addicts, but there's also a high overlap uh, with drug use and with mental illness. And it is one of those things where the crime of letting it continue is immense as well. I mean, people are getting raped out there on the street. People are also, as you, Crystal, as you alluded to, not being able to take care of themselves. Uh, I have a friend who's currently working in the ER, and the amount of people who walk in there with mental illness and, co- and also overlapping drug use, leading to like necrotic infections and to death, on top of uh, disease and spread and all that, is something that we just really don't grapple with um, at a high level. So, uh, have you seen any? One, you know, bring kind of a third way, more nuanced approach to this discussion. Because from what I can tell, it seems almost unidirectional in terms of criticism and contempt towards the policy, which is a human disaster, which I don't think a lot of people are denying. In terms of have you seen a more nuanced accounting? You know, I think it really depends. I mean, I, I can speak for myself in terms of I do think one of the major issues is the lack of psychiatric beds and psychiatric facilities, many of which were closed during the deinstitutionalization movement of the 20th century, Hmm. which was well-intentioned, but an absolute policy disaster. And you can almost trace a direct line between the rise in incarceration rates and the decline in psychiatric beds in the United States of America, where Hmm. instead of going to psychiatric facilities, people end up in prison. Hmm. So to... Yeah, that and that's a big part of this. You need more humane psychiatric facilities for people to be able to exist in. Right. Ross, what do we know about the numbers in terms of um, has there been a rise in homelessness in New York City? Is it more visible? Um, I know Adams also has had other very controversial policies of just clear, like, clearing out homeless encampments, which actually wasn't that different of the from the policy of the previous administration as well. Um, what do we know about those pieces and the numbers? So homelessness peaked around 2016 or so, and then it began to decline, and now it's going back up. I'd have to see what the latest figures are. You had the influx of migrants, which pushed the shelter population up. New York has a right to shelter law Mm -hmm. where anyone who wants shelter can get it. So the shelter count has gone up. I, I think homelessness is just this persistent issue that is not necessarily worse than it was five or six or seven years ago, but it is not solved. And there is at least a visceral sense that there are more people suffering with mental health issues on the street. And there is a fear of this random violence. Now I have to look deeper into the numbers, right? How do you deem what percentage of the street homeless are also mentally ill? Because some are not. Some simply can't afford a place to live or don't want to be in a shelter. Um, But for for whatever, for a variety of reasons, it does feel like there are more people struggling with mental health illness who have no place to go and are certainly posing a danger to themselves and others in in certain cases as well. Hmm. Well, it's a very complex situation, and, uh, you know, there weren't a lot of people that we trusted to sort of break it down in a nuanced way. So, Ross, thank you so much for joining us today and helping us to grapple with all of this. Yep. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's our pleasure. See you later. Hey, guys. Ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah. We rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent working only for you.